Yeah. We're on lesson 7.2 and we're looking at transport of oxygen by haemoglobin. So we talked a bit about how the um, structure of the four polypeptide chains interact, how you change one, it changes the other, it changes the other, it changes the other, and it produces this S-shaped curve. We also talked about how as you change the percentage, the partial pressure of oxygen, you will move through this curve. Remembering that we're not talking about one haemoglobin molecule, we're talking about haemoglobin in a sample of blood. So as we move and um, we increase the partial pressure of oxygen, we're going to move through this curve and have a different kind of saturation of haemoglobin. But what we now need to look at is how does it know to dissociate at respiring tissues? Well, actually, this curve isn't called a haemoglobin association curve. We actually call it haemoglobin dissociation curve because as you change the partial of pressure of oxygen, not only does it load, but it unloads. So if we think about it, at respiring tissues, you have a low level of oxygen because you've used it for respiration. So that means the oxygen concentration is going to decrease. As we decrease the oxygen concentration, the association also decreases and the haemoglobin knows to dissociate and unload the oxygen at the respiring tissue. Now, regardless of the partial pressure of oxygen, we have something else that can affect the loading or unloading of oxygen. And that is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. And what, part, what the partial pressure of carbon dioxide does is it means if we increase the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, what we actually do, we don't move through this curve, we actually shift the curve to the right or the left. So what we're going to look at now is how the carbon dioxide, and when we increase the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, that affects this dissociation curve. Assuming that the one we've already got, the one we know and love, the one that we're happy with, takes place when carbon dioxide, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 5 kPa. So again, if we increase the, the partial pressure of oxygen, we move through the curve. If we decrease the partial pressure of oxygen, we move back through the curve and the haemoglobin unloads. When we look now, at the partial pressure of oxygen is exactly the same, but we also increase the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. We don't just move through the curve, we shift the curve to the right. So what does this mean? It means that if there's a high level of carbon dioxide, you need an even higher level of oxygen for the same level of association. So in essence, this is perfect for the human body because what it actually means is if you've got respiring tissues, they're producing carbon dioxide, you've still got a fair level of oxygen there because you're actually, your heart is pumping faster the stroke volume is increased, is increased and your cardiac output is therefore increased. So you're going to have more unloading of oxygen, but you still want more. And so by having a high level of carbon dioxide, you need more oxygen to bind. So basically it's going to drop off the oxygen that it's carrying. Likewise, if we've got a really low partial pressure of carbon dioxide, we can shift the curve to the left. So imagining that this is 2 kPa carbon dioxide, it means that actually the partial pressure of oxygen, you need a much lower level of carbon dioxide to make the haemoglobin bind. Now you would see this perhaps at the lungs, because at the lungs you've got a low level of carbon dioxide because it's diffusing out, that's where gas exchange is taking place. And so that's where you want oxygen to bind. Okay, so in summary, what I want you to remember is on our graph, 
It's the concentration of oxygen that dictates how we move through and the percentage saturation of this curve. It's the partial pressure of carbon dioxide that decides whether we shift that curve to the right or whether we shift that curve to the left. This phenomenon of shifting the curve to the right or to the left, how that helps us is it helps us to unload, to dissociate and for us to load, associate in the correct places. And the actual shift is called the ball effect.